Welcome to the Insom Insider. Welcome to the Inside. Uh, this is the Insom Insider, your source for Oracle Apex tips, techniques, methodology, and really wherever that discussion takes us. I'm your host, Monty Latchley, coming to you from an undisclosed location just outside of Houston, Texas. Uh, sharing the screen with me today is my good friend and member of the Insom family. Michelle Scammon. Hello, Michelle. Hey, Monty. At the helm, keeping us on time and on task is our producer, French Canadian, Mock Rule. Hi, everyone. It's Thursday, April 23rd, and thank you for spending a piece of your afternoon with us. We're coming to you through the miracle of Zoom teleconferencing. It's a wonderful tool, but it will never represent a 100% replacement for human interaction. I, I once had a manager whose mantra was, you know, while technology is great, people still buy from people, people will always sell to people. And it's people that bring us together today. Let me explain. There is significance to today's date, April 23rd. Uh, many of us on this call would have been in Las Vegas right now for the Collaborate Conference and COVID-19 obviously changed all that. But this need for interaction did not go away. So that's what we intend to bring to you over these next 10 weeks. You see, we're all disrupted. Uh, some of us have existing home offices that we've established. Uh, some of us are working in the dining room. Uh, some of us are hovering over the coffee table. Uh, many of us are working around our, our children, our pets, our dogs, our cats. Um, or our dolphins, <laughs> good one, Mark. Uh, so, so again, the, the main reason we're doing this is we, we miss the interaction that we've come to enjoy at, at Open World, at, at K-Scope, at Collaborate, uh, just to name a few. And it's not just what happens during the session, but it's what happens you know, with the hallway conversations, the happy hours, the, uh, the late nights, uh, the occasional late nights, perhaps not so occasional. But we're gonna have those conversations here, online. We're going to adapt until that time comes where these conversations can, be, can, can occur again face-to-face, -face, the way they were intended to, to be, um, even if we're six foot apart. So Michelle, why don't you uh, kind of uh, let everybody know what they can expect uh, from these next 10 weeks. Sure. First of all, Monty, I have to tell you how happy you've made me by wearing your hat. It's so you. <laughs> well, thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Welcome, everybody, to the first ever episode of the Insom Insider. We're so excited to be here, and we're so glad that you could join us. I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about the program, what it is that we're trying to do here, what you can expect. Um, and a little bit about some of the resources that we'll be making available to you throughout the program. Um, so like Monty said, quite a few of us here at INSOM had been really looking forward to the conferences. We had some great content uh, ready to share with you. And we were trying to come up with a way that we could still share that, but moving away a little bit from the standard one hour webinar. So we feel that it's it's one thing when you're at a conference, you're surrounded by colleagues, you've got the presenter up front, um, you're ready to take notes, you're really in the zone, you're all in no distractions, but that isn't really the reality for most of us these days. Um, most of us are working from home, we've got all the distractions, the, the kids, the animals, and apparently dolphins. Um, so what we're trying to do is bring you some of that content, but in a more um, compressed format. So we're going to be trying to, we'll be aiming for rather short episodes, 30 minutes, give or take. We want to keep it as informal as possible, moving quite quickly. In general, we'll aim for a couple of panelists, because what we're trying to do is keep it as conversational as possible. Um, so uh, as conversational as possible. So we do encourage you to use the Q&A. We've got Mark who's moderating that. Uh, and we're going to try and answer as many of your questions as possible during each episode. Um, but we do want to tell you about our, uh, 
our forum. So most of you have signed up through our website, our portal at Insum Insider. So I actually wanted to take a couple of minutes and take you through that because I think there's some features there that you'll find useful throughout the next 10 weeks. Um, Mark, if you have a chance, can you just drop in the chat the, uh, the URL for, uh, for our portal? I'm just going to open it up over here and share my screen. No problem. Just a sec. And if you can let me know if you see my screen. Yep, that looks OK. All right, so this is where you've hopefully signed up. Um, unless you've logged in, logged out, um, up here on your uh, little icon, you've got access to the program itself. So when you click onto the Insum Insider, there are two things you'll see. So there are two elements to our program. One is the live stream series, which we are doing today. And then we've also got the community forum. So let me just quickly show you the uh, live stream series. So first of all, you've got your great intro video for Monty and you're wearing the hat again. I love it. Thanks for that. Um, and this is where we'll be publishing the weekly schedule. So today we're doing productivity tools. Um, you can see next week we'll be doing Apex and version control. Now I really encourage you to join us next week because we've got something that we're really excited about. Wouldn't want you to miss that. Um, so we'll be talking Apex and version control next week. And in week three, we'll be doing code review with Rich and Lance. So as you can see, we're kind of building up your toolkit, um, trying to help you become uh, better developers or just do great work. Um, we've still got, um, we're still planning our future episodes, but this is where we'll be uh, publishing them as they finalize. When you click into each of the sessions, first of all, this is where we'll be reminding you of how to connect to the live stream. So if you lost the email, although we're trying to do a good job, hopefully, of sending reminder emails, but the Zoom links will always be here, along with the session description. Now, after each session, this is where we'll be uploading the recording. So don't worry if you miss anything. The recordings will be available here in the portal. And we'll be updating, uh, uploading show notes as well. And sometimes we'll be giving away either code snippets or hopefully some useful, uh, useful documents. So you'll find them here. So this sort of part of the portal, hopefully you'll make good use of. Then in addition to that, we've got the forum. Now this is where we'll be inviting you after every session. Please come join us in the forum. The panelists, the guests will be there answering your questions. So we really invite you to, to come here today. Just post your questions in the productivity tools section. Um, and we'll be there answering. Now we'll be there monitoring this throughout the program, but the, the panelists will definitely be there for at least the 30 minutes after each episode if you want to work with them or talk to them, talk to them directly. So um, that's the portal. Uh, Mark, before we go on, are there any questions by any chance on the portal itself? Or? Uh, no questions so far. No? Um, so that's... Uh, so hopefully you'll find that useful. Um, before I hand back over to Monty, I really just wanted to say, as you can see, we're still in the planning stages. This program is for you. We really want to make it um, work for you. So please, if you have any topics that you're interested in, any subjects that you'd really like us to cover, please don't hesitate. Drop us a line here in the forum or send us an email to uh, insider at insum.ca and we'll really be... Uh, looking to hear from you as we sort of build the the future sessions. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to share. Monty, All right. over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle. It's uh, It's been great working with you on this effort. Uh, the entire team, we've had a large team uh, behind the scenes working on this, and it's, it's great to get this off the ground and, and have everyone here uh, join us this afternoon. All right, let's move on to uh, the main event. Um, at, in, at Insum, I I'm surrounded by extremely, extremely smart folks. Uh, two of the smartest are Martin D'Souza and, and Jorge Rimbles. Um, they are giants in the Apex space. Um, not only are they smarter than I am, but they work smarter than I do. And that has a lot to do with the tools that they use on a daily basis. Uh, today's discussion involves productivity tools, You know, the, the tools that they carry around in their toolbox on a daily basis. Uh, Jorge Martin, thank you very much for helping us kick off the inaugural episode of the Insum Insider. So, guys, 
take it away. Hi, Monty. Thanks, Monty. Thank you. So before I share anything, I wanted to show together. We're together six feet apart. And that's my special t-shirt for this time. Martin, how are you doing? Good, good. Going crazy at home. What about you? Oh, you know, I got the girls here all the time. So that's kind of tough. Yeah. But um, so um, we're always talking about different tools. And uh, I want to show you uh, some interesting ones. Um, you know, we're always talking about editors and text expander. And I think we can do sessions just on that. So this is, this is less of a critical um, tool. But nonetheless, it's uh, something that I like to have all the time. So let me, let me share my screen. So uh, I want to show you this one called uh, Quiver. Okay. So Quiver, Quiver is an interesting uh, little tool. Um, it's an app that lets me have snippets of code. Um, first, uh, let me let me just start a new one. I mean, I can I can say this is going to be my in some insider notes, and then the way it works, it kind of has the cells that can be of different types like markdown and i can say uh um hello in insiders so that's my markdown and then i can do bold on markdown and so on and then i can see how it previews or or the side by side but really what i use a lot more is i create a new cell i often just put code and uh like I'll have a select statement and and uh, some snippet of code. And what's cool though is I can I can select a language, and I can have, for example, another one. I'm going to select it to be code, and I'm going to say that this one is uh, JavaScript. So then I can have something that is JavaScript specific. You know, it's kind of nice. I I love this. So. I, I try to have a distinction. You know, I think uh, we've talked about text expanders, but text expanders are for things I want to use almost exactly like that a lot. But I use Quiver for all sorts of notes. I mean, you can see here, uh, I have this different areas like Apex snippets. For example, you know, I'm always forgetting this show weight. Like, is it weight on or is it show weight or uh, I don't you know, when you want to submit a page, this is the button and you can actually turn the weight indicator. So I kind of like to have that and just reference it or, or this long, long version, right? Where you can actually set values and items and show the weight. So I kind of like to, to find those things. You know, another snipper I, I use a lot is uh, if you ever have to yeah, generate rows. I, I, I think you're, you're talking, so the cool thing is, I, I used to use Quiver, right, for full disclosure, and you know that I've dropped it since, and I'll explain why in a second, but this is more than just code, right? These are, it is. this is a good area to put code, and I like it because it formats code in whatever way, right? It's not just a SQL file, it's not just JavaScript or CSS, it's anything at any point in time, because sometimes you might want JavaScript and C CSS and SQL all in the same, that's right. Let's say. That's right. Uh, it, and that's one thing. But the other cool thing is, you you've worked with me, Jorge, so you know I'm, I I take a ton of notes whenever I have meetings and conversations, and I because otherwise I forget what I say. I sometimes commit to things that I may or maybe not should do, but uh, but I I just want to remember what needs to be done. And and the cool thing is, you can use these purely for note taking, right? Based on conf like you, I can see you have conferences. I'm not asking you to go into that, or right, right. Uh, or clients or things like that. And that's where it's like, don't for those that are listening, don't just think code. Think about your entire like go paperless essentially. Yeah, you can I organize. Do and you're right. <clears throat> you're right. I I do organize a lot of information here, uh, like OSX <laughs> things. Like for example, if I need to uh, add a spacer on my doc. This, this things that sometimes I'm Googling. So, uh, and yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, there's a, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to go into those, but I can have uh, client information and they're just notes. Uh, there's lots of interesting yeah. notes. Um, so gentlemen, the, sorry, we had yeah, a question. Yeah. Is a uh, quiver Mac OS, um, iOS, or is it available on windows as well? That's a good question. So, so quiver is Mac OS only, but, um, I started looking at, at a, another one called boost note. Thanks for asking that. Uh, Boost Note is actually available for Windows, 
and, and Linux even. And it's very similar in that, but it is only just Markdown, but it does allow you to specify the language in your block if you wanted language. But again, it's, it's, it's a writing tool, right? So Boost Notes, as you can see, is very similar. Uh, Sorry, gentlemen, we have a, one more question. Yeah. Um, can you share Quiver with other developers? You can export notes, but um, that your notes can be saved on, on a shared drive or a Dropbox and then you're syncing them. But you, you actually, I think you need to export the, the notes themselves to share them. Do you know, yeah, Martin? You, I don't think, another... no, I don't, I don't know, but I wouldn't, like, I hate doing that. And it's not that I want to help other people, but they're my notes and they, and they make sense to me. And people think about things differently. So you should write your notes and what works best for you. Uh, you can use these as examples, but you should come up with your own process with things, which is why I'm not a big fan of like, these are your notes. Like think about this when you, when you work, like you see a lot of people with notebooks, right? And then yeah. they just write in it's, and people take notes entirely different. Everyone has one process doesn't work great for other processes. That's right. Uh, so that's, that's what I'd recommend is you could, but, it's not really the point. You don't share notebooks, they're yours. Right. Now that said, Jorge, I know you're showing a couple apps. I still, I used Quiver until I stopped because it wasn't, uh, it didn't work on iPad. And if you, or the phone, I know they've since changed it a bit. I still don't think it's up to par. So there's a better tool personally, I think called Bear out there. And it's just B-E-A-R app. I think it's Bear app, okay. Uh, bear dot app a a p just google it yeah um, i thought i had it Mac installed OS. Mm -hmm. the the cool thing is is there's there's a couple of features i think that are better than quiver and the main thing is one it syncs across all your devices literally from the mac os to your ipad to your phone to your watch i don't really use it on my watch but if you have kids and for instance, the client calls you or someone calls you from a project and you're at a park or somewhere else, I've pulled up my notes on my phone and, and referenced it. The other big thing it has is hashtag sorting. So you've had to explicitly put your notes into folders, right? And that's kind of like the Windows file system. Bear allows the Google Drive type of system where you just tag notes and notes can appear in uh, in any area, right? So for instance, I know I put notes, I always put date and month, like a year and month on all my notes, but I also might have a note in the conference folder. So for instance, we just had Apex at home. So they were April, 2020. And I wanna see this in April, 2020 area. And I also wanna see it in, uh, in the conferences and Apex at home. And so that's what I've really liked with Bear. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, yeah. I... I Couple more questions that came in on sure. Quiver. Um, why not use snippets on GitLab or GIST on GitLab? Just sorry, on GitLab. I like. GitHub. I I I think there are different use cases. I I like the immediate yeah. access of this. Like Martin said, it's kind of like note taking, right? There, it's a little. Bit, I I wouldn't discard doing snippets that uh, on Git um, uh, Git Git code, GitHub, and all those. So it, that's still an option. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. Get, get and, and there's different oh, tools. Just one one thing on that is like you're showing your OSX things. I have an OSX install script so that when I install, when I have to reformat or I get a new laptop, these are the steps I do in OSX. It doesn't really belong in a gist or something else. You could put it there, but it's kind of like notes I scramble around with. So they're one yeah. time. They're, they're It's just different tools for different. I don't know about you, right? But if if I put something like that, I needed. I want it to be a little more polished. But this notes, they can be just just notes for yeah. me. They don't need to make sense like, to anybody else. No, no. On the, just, subject, yeah. on the subject of notes uh, in Quiver, uh, where are they stored? And can we access notes from different PCs? They're, they're local, but I, like I mentioned, you can share them on Dropbox or uh, a shared drive so they can sync. Or uh, the tool that Martin was saying, uh, they can use iCloud to also share them across yeah. your devices. Yeah. Okay, and uh, another That's question why came I think in. Bear is, Bear is the better tool because of that. It's just, it's there. That's debatable. Um, but I use, uh, I use U Ulysses is the other competitor of Bear. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's another similar tool like that that does exactly the same type of uh, features. So anyway, those are good tools to, to share. A comment that came in on uh, about Quiver is, uh, so basically you put in Quiver anything that you Googled like five or 10 times? You put in whatever you want. You can put in recipes. No <laughs> one's 
<laughs> you know, yeah. so we, 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 you know, as long as you have free speech in your country, you can put whatever you want in it, those notes and, and it's whatever makes sense to you. It's a scratch pad. I mean, it works well as a scratch pad as well. It's a, it, yeah. So Martin, I want to show you another thing. Okay. And actually, you know about this one. Yeah. I love this. Balsamic. I, I love this. I use it as often as I should. So, so hold balsamic. on. Why don't, you, why don't you say the situation, the problem first? So the situation sometimes is you, you need to show what you're going to build or you're going to have, you want to have a design that you can hand to somebody else. Or maybe I just want to have a play around with a design, a complicated design and, and then start building. What other use cases you have for this? How would you describe it, to? So I, I have the same use cases and a lot of time people, especially in Apex are like, well, just prototype it in Apex and show it to someone. And the problem I fight all the time on that. And the problem is because if people see it in Apex or like it's already built and yeah. that gets it. And, and the other thing is too, is when you show the reason why I like balsamics, it's, it's literally looks like you hand draw in it where right. I've seen other tools out there that look like you, you design something that actually looks like a final product and people will look at it and saying, well, I want the button blue instead of red. I've literally had these huge design sessions with very important people in the room. Someone pipes up, the button should be blue instead of red. And was like, guys, you're missing the entire point. It's irrelevant. It's just a button, right? And so would you do, so, uh, so that's the problem. And then this is the solution. It's digitalized hand-drawn diagrams. You, you bring a great point. I mean, that's, that's actually the first thing I tell people when, I, when they haven't seen Balsamic. It's like, it looks rough on purpose so that we're not distracted talking about style and colors and fonts, right? So that's exactly mm -hmm. it. So it has some powerful features. Let me just uh, show people a little bit. I, I love this, uh, their, their data grid. Literally this text generates this table. So let me, let's, let's kind of start it from scratch. So I can do name and department. I can do Jorge uh, development and Martin. I'll put you also in development. I won't. Okay. And, um, and I hit control enter and I have now two columns. I have two column report and I can add something else and put a, put a value, right? And then it gets populated. It's super powerful, right? Super, super quick to demo some, some uh, fake data for somebody to see. But the other way I use it is I'm gonna create a blank one. I'm gonna bring a, a screenshot. You can have an existing application. I love doing this for enhance existing applications and sometimes demo how something's gonna look. I drop the image into Balsamic and now I can say, well, we're gonna have a different type of data down here. Or what if I add a side-by-side -side type of data here and then I can add a, a label and say, well, we're gonna add a new tab. And this tab is your analytics. And if I can spell analytics, you know, you can start adding new things. And, um, and then uh, the other thing about Samic lets me do is navigate between regions really easy. So I can say that this, uh, of course that wouldn't make sense, but this cancel button, I can link it to any of the other pages. So I'm gonna go to the mockup three. So then you click on that and navigates to that page. So it generates a PDF that you can share and those links are navigable within the PDF. So people get even a, a, an impression of how an application will, will work. And there's lots of attributes that you can, you can share on it. So any questions? Mark, anything else we should... You want to add, Martin, on this? A couple of a uh, couple of notes. Um, uh, um, someone mentioned that uh, Joplin is similar to Quiver, but is open source, um, and gave the address in the uh, in the in the uh, chat section. And um, another comment was uh, was looking for exactly this kind of thing recently. I'm on Windows, so started using Boost Note about a month ago. Very handy and oh, allows cloud storage, so it can share across my computers. Very nice. Also, Jorge. Uh, Something I didn't know when I first started using Balsamic is how you can navigate across pages and stuff like that. So it actually, um, you can get some of the functionality kind of going from 
comic page to buffonic page that you have in your in your final web app. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You do get that that navigation. I'm gonna call this page two, uh, which is what I was doing here. And let's recall, let's just name this page one. And here I'm gonna add a button. I already have. Oh, let's add a button. I'm gonna also mention that there's a free version, button. free version page of Balsamic. Two. Um, so I don't, do, I'm do not up to date with the you. versions. Yeah, go ahead. Here's the thing. When, when people are, I know someone wrote about, uh, about the free version of note taking and the free version of balsamic, that mentality has to change. Those is way off topic is stop thinking about free, right? Nothing's free. And when you get free things, you also get free things, right? In that sense of, you should want to pay for things because when you pay for things, you get support and the product constantly improves and someone has motivation to change it. So free is good up until the point that you're running critical things. So for instance, for me, I, I tried Bear Out. They had the free edition, right, which limits you on certain things. It's, and I liked it, but I find it very important. I was like, okay, paid version, done. And I have spent zero time fighting syncing or updates or any of that because someone else is taking care of it for yeah. me. And I focus on my, I focus on what I get paid to do and what my job is. I don't struggle with tools to save $10 here or there. And I think a lot of people get confused, right? Like if you think about it, I don't know what an average salary is in the development world, but let's call it a hundred thousand dollars or something who knows. Um, and people are fighting over $10 a month. And they'll spend their time. It's it, I. I really don't think people should just focus on free. Focus on what works for you and just do it. I agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, gentlemen. We had a comment that is wondering about uh, this. Are these only productivity tools for iOS, or is there something similar for uh, Windows? But Balsamic is uh, all all platforms. Cross platform. Okay. It's cross platform. Yeah, as you mentioned that. And they even have a, a web web build tool too. So uh, they have an option where you don't even need to install anything, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, they kind of branched out before it was just the install. And then they have, I think with Jira and they, they've really integrated very well. It's been a while since I've used it, but they've, they've got a lot of different options for people. I think their web version is like a monthly subscription or something. Yeah. So Martin, you have something to show. I do. I do. I have a few things to show. You have no other comments on my free versus not free, Jorge? I thought that would spark some uh, debate with you. Oh, I'm, I'm the guy that pays for, I got tons Everything. of tools. I got, yeah. I got, people actually criticize that. that I'm, <clears throat> I'm like, really? I got to pay for that one? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, actually. I'm not going to disagree there. Sorry. Yeah. Jorge, you got, you got me to pay for a few things in the last few days. So I, yeah. It, it's like, I'm showing you some tools, right, Michelle? And, and that, you, you had to have it. <laughs> I need you to sign my expense account this month. <laughs> I can try. I don't know if it's going to help, but I'll sign it. <laughs> I appreciate that they've been some great tools. I'm very happy with my new toys. Great. Thank you. Okay. So let me share this. Let's hope this works. All right. So how's that looking? You can see it. Yep. Looks good. Okay. So I'm going to describe the, the situation. <clears throat> I work on a lot of projects and, and especially personally, I'll, uh, I don't know, I have some open source projects or Docker projects, or even people will have their corporate projects, right? And what happens on average, uh, I, I'm as guilty as the next person to do this, is to start one project, I copy another project and trim out what I don't want and start over again. Jorge, I guess you've done that too in the past. It sucks, but you do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't like doing that. And it's to me, the waste of time is you always start, you have to strip out and then you always forget something and you get like, it causes more problems in the end. So I've always thought about like, well, maybe I can create some template thing and then copy the repo. But even that within, within Git, 
copying repos still links to one another and I didn't want any of that too. GitHub came out with something called GitHub templates recently. So for those that don't know, GitHub is a Git repository. Hopefully most people don't know or know about it. If you don't know about Git, you really learn about it, but regardless. What it allows you to do is saying, saying pretend you have this re repository and you're saying, you know, this is what I use for my standard development application. I always start all applications or all projects, whatever that means, personally work, et cetera, with a set thing. So you set it up and get like this and you want to create a template, right? What you know, some people do is they copy this, copy all the files, it's a waste of time. What GitHub now has is you can define a project as a template. So you click up in settings here and you just say, this is a template repository. And then you go back to the main repo and you're going to see this new button here is use this template. So suppose Jorge, let's just call this the Insum Insider project. I would click that button. I type Insum Insider, make this public, and I'm going to create the repo. So all the commits you had from your project template are not brought over? Uh, That's yep, great. Because I, well, I wasn't sure. It's a good question. Uh, uh, but when I look at the commits, it's just this. So the nice thing is too, it says generated from, right? I'll pull right. that up a bit. That's interesting. So not, is that different from forked? Yeah, it's, it's not forked. different from forking, which is a huge, huge difference, right? And so now I have my thing, my starter template, and I can just start going, right? And so I've got some VS Code scripts in here to automatically compile from VS Code. I've got uh, template structures. Now I can put those as snippets. That's a whole other debate altogether, but this is just the, very high level sample you can do whatever you want and that's the first thing i want to show you any questions mark or sorry no none uh, none so far hey martin do you know how to use this from the command line how do you start no i don't know i don't know like i know github has come out with a new cli the command line tool it wouldn't yeah. be in native Git, because this is not, as far as I know, a Git. That feature. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And it's it seems thing like with merge or pull requests and stuff, they're not they're not Git features, right? They're GitHub and and uh, GitLab requests. They each call them something different. So hopefully, I I really don't know. I mean, GitHub has let's say GitHub. Uh, CLI tool, uh, they have this command line. I think this is from them. Let's see this. You'd have to look here and see if you can cl like clone template repositories. I, I don't know what's in right. there. I, I see somebody mentioned that they couldn't see the use template button. I, I think you should see it now because it was off on the original. Yeah, so it, it shows up here. So it's right beside clone or dim, like it's the big green button there. And there's also a question, uh, which GUI tool are you using with Git? I think we need to have that as another in some insider talk, Martin. We're gonna, we can talk a long time yeah. for that one. Um, Martin and I have yeah. different tools that we like to use. I'm, I'm just gonna mention, I like using one called Tower, and I've also been recommending another one called Fork. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. I'll, I'll leave my two cents on this. Dan McGann told me a long, long time ago, learn Git, the basics of Git through a command line, and I hated it, and I agree 100%. You, it is not subversion, and it's not intuitive to start. Learn the command line. And then all the GUIs make sense. If you just go straight to GUI, I found it completely lost in there. Didn't understand what was going on because I didn't understand the fundamentals. That said, if you want, just Google Git tutorial, uh, what is it, Atlassian? These guys are Bitbucket. These guys have great tutorials on learning the fundamentals of Git. Once you understand that, all the GUIs pretty much the same. I use I just use native VS Code built-in Git features. But for those that are learning Git, 
this is a great website. Yeah, Martin, yeah I, I completely agree with that. Go ahead. Sorry, just going back to your to your template button. So we, we have a comment. Someone's actually looking at your repo and doesn't see the use template button. The question is, do I have to use this in my own repo first? Uh, can you refresh the page? I don't know, Jorge, can you try yeah. it? I, I just went, I, I can see it. I see it. Um, oh, uh, so all, all I'm wondering is, are you logged in? That's a good question. All right. Oh, maybe this is something we can continue in the in the forum after, but that would be something yeah. to yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to be like I'm lot like this is a private tab. You, you right. have to be logged in. There you go. In. You gotta you be logged in. All right, let's go. Are you ready for number two? Oh, you got more? Sure. Yeah, Bring I got it. more. I got this is this is the final one. So this, this is gonna make it or break it. So I'm gonna probably stop sharing the screen. I'm going to partially share the screen because it, it, it has to be shown like this. You know what? So I'm going to stop my video too. So you can share okay. for So if you want to double effect. click on, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'll, I'll share my screen to start and I'm going to stop and we're going to switch hundred percent to camera because you have to see this. So with screenshots, a lot of time people do screenshots and you you have some hot key, you, you draw an area, and then you have to go with your uh, mouse into some image editor and draw boxes and highlight text and things like that, just to send a screenshot picture to someone else. So it happens a lot, for instance, when I'm creating issues for Apex applications, or I'm trying to highlight something. And it's not that it's a long process, it's just annoying. And Mac OS and the latest version of Mac OS, and I forget what it's called, Hori, is it Catalina? Yes. Okay. Catalina. So this is in Mac OS and iOS and all the latest upgrades, greatest and latest upgrades, right? So don't do this on older systems. It may not work. I can't guarantee it. But I'm going to show you a way to do screenshots and then a real cool way to mark it up. So that this is a like for me, it's uh, I don't even know the links to do a screenshot, but you'll notice. Uh, there's just a hotkey. You'll have to, we'll put it in the show notes. It, this is an Apple hotkey. This is a built-in Mac OS tool to do screenshots. So I'm going to highlight this. Now there's lots of different features down here in this bar to capture the full screen, draw what you want. It's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. So a lot of people, for instance, we're talking about this use template button. And let's say I want to do it. The current way is I have to hit capture and then open an editor, take out a screen like draw a box around it, it's kind of annoying. So this is where I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna do this again in a different way. So if you want, double click on, and this is my amateur video hour here. Uh, let me, hold on, I gotta start, I gotta hit the hotkey first. You're gonna see some of my ceiling. <laughs> and so I've got my iPad right here. This is the key thing and this is the screenshot stuff there. So I'm just going to draw this video, this out, right? How's it going? Yeah. And I'm going to hit capture. And then in the bottom right corner of my screen, you, you can't see it very well, but there's, oh, am I in bottom? Okay. Bottom right. It showed up with a little, little icon, right? That of what I just screen captured. So I'm going to double click it. And hopefully this works. Do you need to wake up your yeah i need to wake it up one more time so let's let's do this one more time um is this not working this is a make or break uh of course it doesn't work now is it going to my phone hold on Well, I don't know what to say. I'm gonna try this one more time. Yeah, of course it works all the other times. Nothing like live demos, right, Mark? No. <laughs> so what's supposed yeah, to happen? One sec. It's supposed to show up so, on the iPad? Yeah, it's supposed to show up on the iPad. And let me just do this. And I don't know why, I don't know if they switch networks. Give me one more second, I'll try one more time. It, you're supposed to see this button 
at the top of this. Um, I'll share my screen one more time. I'm going to try this. And you're supposed to be able to draw right on the iPad. And it's been working all the other times except for now. So mm -hmm. eh, it is what it is. Fortunately, I'll, uh, I'll switch to screen share view again. So what will happen is you should see on your on your pop up up here, there will be a little button to share and it will actually push the image right onto your iPad, and even if the iPad is off, which is pretty cool. And then you can draw on your iPad and it will actually save it. So you don't have to like here, you normally have to go with a box and then kind of drag it over and move things around, which aren't as nice and intuitive. Whereas the other one, I'm just going to try it again. It it just syncs right in with the with your iPad. And again, and, I and I don't know why with that's your, with your finger. You just draw with your finger, or you just draw exactly with your finger, or an Apple pencil if you have one. Which is really yeah, nice. that's that's, that's so where it's really valuable. That's for those with the fancy iPads. Not you know I, you know I yeah you know there's some iPads budget iPads that do work with the pencil. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what how, I was testing this two minutes before we started. I, know, I saw you doing it too. Well, just that have was to the big. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Of course, it stops working now. So, but Martin, did I miss? Did you say what is the tool called? Did did you? It's just Apple. It's like Mac OS screenshot. So it's a built in. It's the built in screenshotting oh, tool. So their I, old screenshotting okay. tool before Catalina was just this basic like draw and see what you get what you get. This new one has a lot of cool new features in it, and that's one of them. And it just kind of auto detects your your iPhone, or you, it will happen on your iPhone as well. It will auto detect it. And again, you'll see this small little um, share uh, share screen button. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. But yeah, that's that's all that that I've got. It's too bad it didn't work. Too bad. You'll you'll run it again and, and record it for us. Of course. <laughs> well, of course it will work right after we'll we start. Try this, it. We'll try it ourselves. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh thank you. Uh, uh, both of you for for bringing the tools uh, that that you guys uh, recommend use on a daily basis. Um, you know that a lot of times we think uh, that if, if if we know something, everybody knows it. But you know every time every time I I, I have conversations with Jorge with uh, with Martin, I I learned something. Uh, certainly on this conversation, I uh, I had never used Quiver before. Uh, but you know, think about it. How many times when you're working on projects, you're solving the same little mini problems every time. So being able to put those kind of uh, code snippets in a in a repo like that uh, certainly certainly is uh, going to be a time saver. Michelle, mm -hmm. what about uh, what about you? I I loved what Jorge showed about Balsamic. Actually, I've used that before, but I've never done the dropping the screen cap from sort of. A partially made app into it and then building on top. I think that's a huge time saver, and I never, I didn't actually realize you could do that. So that was, yeah, that's fantastic. I loved it. Yep. And Good I stuff. am gonna try Martin's trick because I'm sure it works. There must have been gremlins today, um, but I do find that super annoying having to do all the screen caps, marking up, emailing. So I look forward to trying that too. Yep. So yep. thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thank you both uh, for, for giving up your time. Uh, you know, as Michelle, you mentioned earlier in the, in the, in the show, we, we want to make sure if you have some thoughts, if you have some ideas on some topics that you'd like to see us uh, attack later on, uh, bring it to us, uh, put it in the, uh, in the notes, uh, bring it to the forum. We, um, you know, we want this to be, we want to, we want to have subjects and, and topics that, that you're most interested in. So absolutely. Um, absolutely. Now join us next week. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel when Vincent Morneau and Neil Fernandez are going to discuss deployments and proper source control. Uh, the following week, uh, May 7th, we're going to be joined by in some zone, Rich Soul and Lance Eaton. And uh, the topic of the day will be code review. Uh, the downbeat will be uh, 2 PM Eastern and you're not going to want to miss that. 
for those of you wanting to keep the party going, because um, there ain't no party like an Apex party, head over I see to more the, questions. Yeah, so, I see a lot more we can talk about. Yeah, yeah, let's bring them over to the forum. We tried to, uh, we tried to keep this thing down, you know, uh, 20, 30 minutes, but, you know, it, obviously we, you guys tapped into something. There was a lot of questions. That's a great thing. Let's go ahead and uh, move over to the forum. Jorge and Martin are going to be hanging out there for another 30 minutes or so answering all your questions. Mark, you have the link to the forum in the chat. Uh, so I say uh, put a fork in it. We're done. We'll do it all again next week on the Insum Insider. Thank you all for joining us. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.